Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to continue part four of our addiction series, and I want you to pay careful attention to me because I may have to do this teaching in two parts. I have a subject called A Little Toddy for the Body. 50% of Americans drink alcohol in some form, and 50% do not. What I'm going to do is to start a series in this part to share with you why I teach my family and why I teach our youth group to totally abstain from alcohol in all forms. Now, some of you immediately want to turn me off. You're just going to say, well, I don't want to listen to that. But it's knowledge you need. It's information you need because there may be a lot of you that when we get into this later on are not going to know the information I'm going to give you and you've never heard it before. I've had some of my partners who would uh, drink alcohol in moderation after they hear me teach this say, I never knew that. No one, Perry, ever taught it. My church never taught it. It helped me to understand the reason why. And, and now they abstain completely. So let's just go into this. Here's what Ephesians 5, uh, 15 through 18 says. See that you walk uh, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, if I'm reading that in this English translation, it sounds like, you know, drink, but as long as you don't get drunk. However, the literal translation is, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So what Paul is saying here, he's not trying to tell everybody, go drink a little bit and have a good time. He's comparing it to say, look, if you go in this direction, you're going to lead to debauchery, but you need to be filled and continually controlled by the Spirit. Because I will tell you this, that if you become totally enamored, controlled, and filled with the Holy Spirit, here's what you'll discover, that the substances, the chemicals, or even the alcohol that you have or you're using, you're not going to need. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit and the peace of God and the joy of the Lord is going to fill you to the point that you will not need other substances. And before I get into this uh, real deep, uh, I remember that the Holy Spirit spoke to me months ago. I was talking to a good friend of mine, Jensen Franklin. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said this. He said, Son, do you realize that when my people, I'm not talking to the world, I'm not talking to sinners, but when my people who are saved, you say they're saved and they say they're filled by, by the Holy Spirit or whatever, but they're my people. When they begin to become involved with taking illegal drugs or when they become involved with alcohol, here's what they're saying to their unsaved friends. Jesus is not enough. Jesus is not enough to get me high in the most highest presence, so I've got to have a high. Jesus is not enough to get me out of bed in the morning, so I've got to have this uh, drug to help me get up. Jesus is not enough to calm my nerves, so I have to take a toddy for the body. And I want you to think about that for just a moment. What are we telling the world? What are we telling people when we participate in something that is a substance that has certain effects on our mind or certain effects on our body. Are we telling the world Jesus is not enough? But let me tell you, this Tennessee preacher wants to tell you something. Jesus is enough to get you higher than you've ever been. Jesus is enough to get you up out of bed in the morning and start you on your way. Jesus is enough to help you get a good sleep at night. Jesus is enough to bring you peace. Jesus is enough to bring you the joy of the Lord. Somebody ought to clap right there. I got a little audience behind me. Isn't that the truth? Some of, the, some, of these, some of these guys used to be bound up by stuff, and they know what I'm saying, that all you need is the Lord. Now, there is confusion, however, when it comes to alcohol or strong drink. Look at some of the scriptures, you'll understand why. Look not upon the wine while it is red, Proverbs 23, 31. Then it says, Thou shalt bestow thy money for strong drink, Proverbs 4, uh, De Deuteronomy 14, 26. Then Proverbs 20, verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, 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 strong drink is raging. And then you turn around over here in Leviticus 10, 19. Uh, Do not drink wine or strong drink. And then Paul writes to Timothy, Don't, don't drink uh, water, but take a little wine for your stomach's sake, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. So all of a sudden you read these verses, well, this says absolutely no. Well, this one looks like it's okay. So how do you settle the, what appears to be a contradiction? First of all, there's three groups. There are those who totally prohibit alcohol in, of any kind, total abstinence. Number two, there are those who teach that you should abstain in this sense. It was in biblical times, but culturally it's not good for us today. 
Then there's a third group, and this seems to be a growing group that says moderation. Christians can drink alcohol in moderation. So these are the three groups that you deal with in any kind of a church setting. Years ago, there was no issue about this. Most Baptist, Pentecostals, Methodists would never con drink, consider drinking alcohol in any form. It was considered when we grew up something that was ungodly or something that was just carnal or worldly. It was preached that it could destroy you, your family, your walk with God. Then came what was called the social drink. And the social drink was presented in such a way that as business people had to travel, as they had to meet with people, etc., that uh, it, was, it was something that you may have to do in order to meet people and to socialize. What's odd is in the days of the revivals of men like Billy Sunday, when they preached, they shut the bars down. In the early revivals, when the power of God would fall in an area, one of the first things that went away was all the liquor business or all the moonshining business in West Virginia, Kentucky. So it's a really odd thing how that when God really begins to send revival and break loose, then there's no question concerning the issue. But when there's not a revival breaking loose and no conviction present, it's sort of like anything goes, it doesn't really matter. Now, I want to show you in the Bible what happened to people who would drink wine or strong drink. Now, look at this. This is very quick. Quick, we're going to go through this. In Genesis 9, 18 through, 18 through 27, Noah planted a vineyard, got drunk, and was lying around in a cave naked, and his grandson Canaan ended up coming under a curse as a result of the incident. Genesis 19, 31 through 38. Lot's daughters thought that the, this is what the, the, the historians say, the Jewish historians, they thought the world had been destroyed when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, and they thought their father's name was going to be removed from the earth because he, there was no seed to carry it on. And Lot's daughters got him drunk, and Lot committed incest with both, both of his daughters after becoming drunk. Number three, when Israel began to worship the golden calf, Exodus 32, verse 6, 25, 28, and 35, the people took all their clothes off as they began to drink. It says they drank. As they began to drink, they took all their clothes off and got into idol worship. Amnon was a wine drinker in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 28. And if you read in 2 Samuel 13, he is the one who raped his half-sister. Then afterwards, he got drunk, drunk after what he did. Uh, that's in 2 Samuel 13, 28. Now, we could give you more examples than this. We could give you the examples of Nebuchadnezzar drinking the, the, with wine out of the uh, time in Babylon and how the kingdom was overthrown. That wasn't just overthrown for that. I want you to understand that. But it is in the Bible that they were having this big party with the, the sacred vessels of God. And God's judgment came on him. Here's what I want to say to you. Now, please listen to me carefully. I want to say this in love, but I want to say this firmly. When you begin to study the examples that are in the Bible, here's what happens when people drink strong drink that strong drink being something with alcohol content. Number one, this is, this is important you hear this, when they became drunk, their judgment becomes totally perverted, their judgment becomes blurred. Number two, when they become drunk, it usually leads to sexual immorality. Number three, as they begin to drink strong drink, their clothes come off. <laughs> now, let me give you just a good example. Ready? American spring break in March. I mean, what did they do at spring break? I'm telling you, Drink, drink, drink. And what happens when they start drinking? The clothes come off. What happens when the clothes come off? It leads to acts of fornication. And I want to say this for ministers. And I want to just be upfront because I'm probably really jumping ahead of myself on the outline. But you know, the Bible in the New Testament said a minister, a bishop, is not to be given to wine. And that means period. That means not at a dinner table. That means not socializing with friends. That means not on vacation when anybody's watching. But a bishop is not to be given to wine. And I want to make a statement, and I'm very careful saying this, but I know of five ministers over my lifetime. I'm talking about since I've been in ministry. All of them were either raised UPC, United Pentecostal, or they were raised in Pentecostal churches that taught total abstinence. These men started drinking alcohol, and when they did, things began to fall apart. All of them have lost their, uh, their companion, meaning they've gone through a, a, a serious divorce. Some of them have totally lost their ministries. And some of them are just struggling even as I'm speaking right now. Now, again, uh, this may not be the only root of their problem, but I do believe that when men who are men of God, who are ministers, I'm, I'm speaking specifically to ministers, what happens is when you begin to compromise in this area, what, what, what begins to take place is the, the, you don't have the, 
you have restraint. As a minister, there's restraint that the Holy Spirit gives you. But inhibitions are lifted, uh, judgment that you would normally judge yourself and say, let me put up a wall here. The walls begin to come down. And so in the Bible, let's go just back to the Bible, definite difficulties started with people who were given strong drink. Now, the kings and priests of the Old Testament, the priests were to be sober and avoid strong drink. Now, because of time, I have all these scriptures listed. I'm going to put the scriptures on the screen for you. You can look these up later. The, the priests were to be sober and avoid strong drink at the tabernacle ministry, Leviticus chapter 10, 8 through 10. Number two, the kings were instructed not to drink, drink strong drink. And here's why. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law of God and pervert the judgment, nay, of the afflicted. In other words, they can't judge properly and they'll forget God's laws as they do this. Proverbs 31, 4 through 6. Now we read uh, uh, in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 5, 11 through 13, where the Lord is rebuking prophets for prophesying false prophecies because they were drunken. And once again, uh, you read these verses later because what I'm trying to do is get all my information in here. So a lot of times I put the scriptures up, but for the sake of time, we're doing this. Now, here's the point. The Old Testament had three main leaders. It had the prophet, the priest, and the king. The priest was God, a man's contact to God. The prophet was the voice of God speaking to the people, the oracles of God. And the king was the spiritual authority over the entire nation. And in the Old Testament, there are many verses that reveal to you that a prophet, a priest, or a king is to avoid the strong drink because of the impact it will have not only upon them, but the impact it will have upon the nation. Because what happens is this. I'll give you a quick example. A friend of mine many years ago, that he, he was a very handsome young man, and women just were all, I'll be honest, they were just all over the guy before he was saved. They were just after him. And uh, he had trouble with pornography, and he had movie channels in his home. And when he got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, the Lord convicted him. He took the movie channels off, but then he goes to his, the pastor's house and the pastor has one of those movie networks on and they're watching like a PG movie. And so something says to him, wait a minute, why did you take it off when the pastor has it on? So he goes home and puts the movie channel back on. Guess what happens to him? He ends up addicted to pornography and years ago divorced his wife who was a wonderful lady. And he told me the story himself crying. And he said, I judged it by what somebody else did. Here's the first thing you need to understand. You know, there's a scripture, and I don't want to get into the theology of what this verse means, but to work out your own salvation, watch, with fear and trembling. Because there are things maybe I can do that you can't do and things that you can do maybe I can't do. But when it comes to the idea of strong drink, I want you to remember this. Now, I may be getting ahead of myself again, but I'm just going to go with the flow right here. I want you to remember, first of all, that there are a lot of people who watch you and will pattern after you if you are a person who says that you're a Christian. One of the things that impressed me years ago was when a man told me this. He said, Perry, always remember this. The next generation is going to be more liberal than the previous generation. My dad never went to church without wearing a suit and tie. I go to church sometimes with a jacket on and a golf shirt underneath, and I just don't enjoy wearing a suit and tie. My son doesn't even own a suit and tie. He goes to church with jeans on and a T-shirt. Now, God help us if we're at that level. What will they be going to church with you know, in the next six generations? I mean, I don't know, I don't know what it's going to look like. Here's the reason I'm telling you that. In the, in the form of, let's say, alcohol, let me walk over here to this, this glass right here, martini glass. Okay, so you think it's okay, and I know this is usually at a bar, not at home, but let's say you think it's okay to do this at home, so in the privacy of your house, you pour yourself a glass and you drink it, but you've got your children going up watching it. Now, look, I've had, this has happened to people I know, I can't even count the times. The kids are growing up, and instead of drinking it at home, they go to a bar. So your kids are now hop bar hopping. Now what, what, what happens then is they, they raise your grandkids, their kids, to watch them bar hopping. Then what will happen is those kids will start drinking at a party. And in, inevitably, one of those children in your family, if you watch two to three generations of this, either ends up in jail, ends up an addict, or ends up killing somebody on the road. And I don't want to take, you know, I don't want to tell stories that my community would know, but there are stories that where I've traveled where young people watched their parents drink and felt like it was okay for them. And the moment they got 18, you know what happened? Got in a car wreck and they died. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've told, I've told my children, if you ever do this, number one, you'll be doing it against your mom and dad's wishes and your mom and dad's training, but you will never be able to say, I saw my mom and dad do it. In fact, I'm going to tell you something real personal here. I shouldn't probably do this on worldwide television, so my kids are going to find out something. I have two wonderful kids. I love them both dearly. 
but I have a trust fund if something happens to me. And it is in my trust fund statement that if either one of my kids are on drugs or drinking alcohol at the time of my death, they don't get one penny of what I've left them. They have to prove themselves clean for six months of total alcohol. And, I, and, I, and you know, I'm telling you, I got a wife that if I go first, she'll stick to this, believe me. Because here's the thing, if I leave them a lot and they have an addiction, do you know what they're going to do? They're going to go spend all their money on this right here or on, or on, or on something else that could actually cause a premature death in their life. And so some of you parents, I know that you understand how I feel about this. Now, there were people in the Bible that were committed not to drink strong drink. Number six, one through two, a Nazarite who took a Nazarite vow had to avoid wine and strong, strong drink. And we, boy, I wish I had time to talk about Samson breaking his vow and how his hair was cut. And the final vow broken was the cutting of his hair. And that's when he lost the anointing of God. Sometime I want you to read Jeremiah chapter 35 on the Rechabites. Now, the, Re the Rechabites were brought into a chamber of the temple where they saw pots, pots of uh, wine. Of course, these were used, of course, sometimes for the offerings. They were then asked to drink from the pots and they refused. And I said before the sons of the house of Rechabites, pots full of wine and cups, I said to them, drink. And they said, we cannot drink because we made a commitment to our father that we will not drink, neither will our sons forever. And this is where Jeremiah places a special blessing upon the Rechabites as strangers in the land. Because what happened was this, they made a commitment and they made a vow to God to abstain from any form of strong drink whatsoever. Now you said, well, it, why, why was it in the temple? Numbers 28, 7. Thou shalt cause strong wine to be poured out as a drink offering. Leviticus 16, 6. The remainder of the meat offering shall Aaron and his son eat. So in other words, uh, the grape harvest, which was wine, there were drink offerings that were poured out at times in the temple. Now you and I know it's easy to compromise from around people that we don't know. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which the king drank. Da Daniel in Daniel 1.18 is sitting at a king's table in Babylon, and he says, your meat was sacrificed to idol. That breaks the law. I'm from the priestly family. I can't drink strong drink. That breaks the law. And he refused to go either way. He said, feed me beans. Just give me a bowl of beans to eat. I'm, now, this is interesting because this is why I believe God blessed Daniel. This is why God raised him up. This is why God gave him revelation and anointing to see the future. Is because Daniel was not willing to compromise at a table with people. I mean, he could have said, hey, I'm not in Jerusalem. You know, hey, when you're in Babylon, man, do like the Babylonians. Come on, bring it on. That's how most Christians, can, can I be honest with you, would do today if they're in a foreign country or on a trip. But the, he said, I'm not going to defile myself that way. And as a matter of fact, the, the, let, me, let me say it to you this way. I, because I'm going to run out of time here and I want to get this through. You have an outer court, inner court, holy of holies. You have the Israelite, you have the Levite, and then you have the priest. In the Old Testament, the Israelite was able to do some things a Levite couldn't do, and a Levite was able to do some things a high priest couldn't do. God was more directly serious on the character and the lifestyle of the high priest because the high priest was the man who went once a year into the presence of God, into the Holy of Holies, and made atonement for the people. Therefore, in the New Testament, we would call a high priest a bishop. Okay, I'm using a parallel here. A bishop is the highest ranking office that a minister can have, whether it's a denomination or whatever. It's the title of bishop, the call of a bishop. Now, in a bishop, husband of one wife, not given to wine, not given to filthy lucre, not greedy, hospitable. You got all those listings in Timothy about what a bishop should be, right? So here's my point. How close do you want to live to the presence of God? I'm going to go into some old-time sanctification preaching here. If you want to live close to the presence of God, there are things in the outer court that if all you want to do is come in church on Sunday, hoop and holler for two hours and go home, oh yeah, yeah, live like you want. You're still going to be judged by the Lord in the end. But see, when you start getting into the holy place where the, there's the menorah that represents the Holy Spirit, the, the table of shoe bread that represents teaching and the golden altar that's prayer, and you start living in there, there are things as a Levite that Israelites can do that you can't do. God begins to make you live a higher standard, okay? Then if you're going to be a high priest, which is to go past the veil into the Holy of Holies, to hear the voice of God, to speak in the God. Rabbi Getz told me years ago that, that it was believed that when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, he could speak in a language that was given to him supernaturally by the Lord that only him and God could speak in. You know, today the Pentecostals would call that speaking with other tongues. So in other words, here it is. If I want to just be an outer court person and live a basic life and not matter at all, 
and just kind of float through, I may stand before God and, and, and my reward will never be given to me because the Bible said, let no man take your crown. Some people are going to get other people's rewards because people just didn't do what they're supposed to do. But if I want to go in and learn the doctrine and learn how to pray and spend time in God's presence, there's a higher level of commitment I have to have with the Holy Spirit and with God. And the, the final thing is if I want to stay into the Holy of Holies where the ultimate glory and Shekinah glory of God is, then I'm going to have to have a higher standard in my mind, a higher standard of walk. And see, this is the reason why. You know, men like my dad, I'm going to tell you something about my daddy. My daddy went to be with the Lord March 10th of last year, but I never, I've never met a man like him. This man was true holiness and true spirituality when it came to the things of God. And this is the reason why before he died, uh, over the years, he had 16 people totally healed of cancer just by praying for them. This is how he had visions and dreams that were so real it involved the, in the United States. We got calls from people in the government who wanted to know dad's dreams because dad would see things in the spirit that were happening that the government didn't know about. How do you walk that way? You walk that way by body being clear, soul being spirit, clear, spirit being clear. And remember this, shun the very appearance of evil. Let not your good be evil spoken of. And so it's a matter of ethics. You know, to find a verse that says, thou shalt not do this and thou shalt do that. Sometimes you have to take the whole of the scripture and put it together to discover the ethics. Boy, look, how fast, I'm running out of time. I haven't even covered the subject. Now next week, I'm going to show you the difference between the wine in Jesus' day and what is served at tables at restaurants today. This is something that most people have never heard, and I promise you that I've had more people tell me, Perry, that helped me on this subject of should I drink strong drink or not as a spirit-filled believer than anything else I've ever heard. And again, I'm not here to condemn, to condemn anybody. I do want to help you, though, and give you the understanding of why, for example, we believe in total abstinence. All right, I got something special for you. I'll be right back in just a moment. Our offer today on Manifest are the CDs and DVDs from the recent Prophetic Summit. You know, we expected about six to 700 people to show up and over 1,400 people came to this meeting. I hope we can show a clip of the crowd that was there. It was an incredible group of people, but more than that, they came to hear the word of the Lord and God brought forth his word through his servant, Perry Stone. I'm so appreciative of God's presence and his anointing. Very quickly, let me tell you that you can get these on CD or DVD. The Final Prodigies, the ancient church manuscripts that reveal the last days. The second message is your generational blessing angel, understanding the ministry of a generational angel. Angels are assigned to bring blessing into your life. I also talk about angels and children on that uh, this message. The Stone Papers, prophetic notes and nuggets not intended for television. Man, that thing is filled with insight that I hope you get to hear. Profe uh, parabolic principles for supplying all your needs. We go to a major parable of the Bible and show you the principles locked in that parable of having employment and financial blessing. And there's a whole lot more in that teaching as well. This is one that deals with this year, two men with an agenda, the next cycle for America, past presidential patterns and pos possible future cycles. This deals with uh, the two men that are running for president. And as most of you know, you know, I, I pray about a word every four years for that particular cycle of what's going to happen. And so that's what we did here. And, and that's what this is about. What the church can expect before the rapture, the apocalyptic vision of the church before the rapture. And this is uh, another interesting message. So therefore, this album, the Prophetic Summit 2012, here's how you get it. If you want just the CDs, $45 each, offer number SM97. If you want the DVDs, which by the way, do, help, do have the pictures and the PowerPoint on the DVD where you can see what we're talking about as well, they're $75. SM97D. With DVDs, you have to put the letter D there. Now, you can order these by calling 1 888 21Bread, which is a toll free number. Go to the website at perrystone.org and order that way, or Perrystone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320, and include the $45 or more donation, $75 or more donation with the offer number. When you order, I'm going to go ahead and include, whether you get the CDs or DVDs, this comes with it, The Prince Spirit Tormenting 50% of America. And this was preached in Louisville, Kentucky, and it deals with the pharmacia spirit. You know, we've been talking about breaking addictions. This will help someone. It is a CD about 65 minutes in length. So please uh, help us to stay on the air in your area. And in return, 
get this insight, this fresh teaching from the Lord. I don't know about you, but the Word of God feeds me. I love messages. I love preaching, but I love to learn as well. And so this was preached with His unction, the unction of the Holy Spirit, and may it be a blessing to you and to those who listen to it. We're looking forward to hearing from you because it helps keeps, man keeps manifest on the air. Well, thank you for joining me on today's program. Hope that you can get the offer this month. For a few moments, give me your attention. Let me share with you some of the places that we're going to be coming uh, to. I'm going to go through this very quickly. Abba's House, Hicks in Tennessee, a Sunday morning service at 1030, a very special service on July the 1st. Harvest Assembly in Art Grove, Arkansas. That's in actually in Berryville, Berryville Arkansas is where the location is, from what I understand. It's 1045 in the morning. It's on Sunday, July the 8th. Then Thursday through Sunday with two services on Friday, Saturday, and services all day Sunday, the Evangel World Prayer Center on Billtown Road in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's going to be one of our major Hebraic prophetic conferences for the summer for the entire state. We're coming to Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana with Pastor Steve Muncy, July 25th. All the folks up there, we don't get up there that often. Hope you can join me on that Wednesday night service. And then we're coming to Christ Temple for our other, this will be our final summer main event, which will be Wednesday through Sunday, August the 1st through the 5th. It's called the Northeast Hebraic Prophetic Conference. And in Huntington, West Virginia, at the Great Christ Temple Church, August 1st again through the 5th, services Wednesday, two, two services on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and also all day Sunday. Be sure and check out Willis, Texas on Friday through Saturday, August the 17th through the 18th, the fam, uh, Family Faith Church there in Willis. And then we're coming to Huntsville on Sunday, August the 19th. And that'll be 845, 11, and 5 in the evening. And then Lenexa Christian Center in Lenexa, Kansas, Sunday through Wednesday, September the 9th through the 12th for their camp meeting. Those are night services only. Also, by the way, guys, I'm coming to Hamilton, Ohio at the Princeton Pike Church of God. We're coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, back to Victory Christian Center. Uh, and then we're coming to Abba's house for the main event, October 9th through the 13th. Got a lot of things planned. Now, if you want to keep up with where we're going to be, go ahead and go to the itinerary at perrystone.org, and it will give a listing of uh, hotels that are available if you wanted to come in the area. Now, remember, there's no registration fee to attend any of our meetings. We want you to come as you are. We want you to bring as many people as you can because we believe that the atmosphere of God's people joining with you increases your faith and encourages you and helps you, and it really does, to say the least. I love these meetings. I love getting, being able to minister to many of you who are able to attend. Just a, a few quick things that I want to add that may be a blessing to you. Our website at perrystone.org. On Tuesday nights, you can watch The Extreme, which is live right here in Cleveland, which is our youth ministry with Mark, Mark Casto, our special guest speaker. Sometimes I'll be preaching. And then also let me add that if you want us to stay in touch with you with eBlast, you can get on our eBlast list, again, by going on our website, looking over on the left side of the icon. Also on the left, it'll say Stone Report. If you click on there, it'll be a video of me updating every 30 days vital information that I want you to have that I really don't have the time on the Manifest Telecast to talk about. The most important thing, however, that I could say to all of you watching is this. Are you in covenant with Jesus Christ? Do you have a relationship with Him? You know, it's not that hard. All you have to do is believe that He is, he is the Messiah. Believe that He is raised from the dead. Believe that he is, he is at the right hand of the Father in heaven, making intercession for you, and confess that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. And by His blood, He will cleanse you. It's an old-time message that still has power today. There's still power in the blood of the Lamb. Look, I'll be back next week with more teachings on breaking addiction. Travel to Israel with Perry Stone for his 2012 prophetic tour. The date is November 20th through 29th. Go online at perrystone.org or call 1-888-321-3629 for more information and how to register.